This is a video about writing code that writes code using a feature of the .NET framework known as the Code Document Object Model or Code DOM for short. I am Satyaish Chakravarti and this is a video presentation from Winterlect Now. Code DOM is a set of classes that are available in the .NET framework. These classes represent programming artifacts. By instantiating these classes, we may create in-memory representations of the programming artifacts themselves. That is, we may create source code that resides in the memory, or we could serialize it to a file, which we can then compile into a program and later execute. Let's simplify all of this with an illustration. This is a person. This is a real person. A person has a name. He may or may not have hair. In this case, he does. And his hair may have some color. On the left, though, you see a class that represents a person. An object of this class is not going to be a real person, but will come as close to being a real person as the class definition will allow. In the same manner, this on the right side is an if construct. This is a real if construct, just the way you and I write it. But on the left is a class that represents an if construct. Now, it's not a real if construct, but it has properties that describe elements of an if construct. An object of this class will come as close to being an if construct as its class definition will allow. What if you wrote an if construct class such that newing up an object of this class would really produce an if construct in the memory? Now imagine yourself writing a class to represent each and every programming artifact in your language of choice. We've already written a class to represent the if construct. I'm calling it the condition statement class instead of the if construct class. And for all the classes, just for the sake of convention, we're going to prefix the word code. Variable declarations. Even comments. Try catch finally block. A method within a class. A class declaration itself. A namespace. Or one class to represent even a logical entity that will be compilable. An entity that comprises of all the classes and namespaces in your system. In doing this, you will have created, at least on the surface, what appears to be a code document object model. Now, in the next approximately two hours that we have together, I want to talk about why you would want to generate code. What are some of the use cases that would motivate you to do that? I'll mention a couple of areas in the .NET framework and other real-world projects that use Code DOM. I'll talk about limitations of Code DOM what you can do with Code DOM, and more importantly, what you cannot. I'll then introduce you to some of the alternatives we have within the .NET framework to generate code dynamically. There's also a couple of tools in the open source landscape, and I'll talk about them briefly. And that'll be a suitable time to draw a brief comparison between Code DOM and its alternatives. We'll look at the Code DOM architecture, and finally, we'll put Code DOM to use. That is, we'll write code, that writes code. Winterlake now brings you high quality video training courses on advanced software development topics from experts. My name is Satyesh Chakravarti and this was a Winterlake now presentation.